I haven't used KMM currently. Uh, I, I have dabbled in it a bit, but I haven't built any apps with it yet. Um, but I think the, the idea is the same as, and I think the, the question is uh, like comparing it to Flutter. I think the idea is uh, kind of the same of where every single platform is going nowadays, or a lot of platforms are at least, uh, where you just want to like reuse code, you want to have the same business logic, you want to um, spend as little time possible to get a product out and get a product out on multiple different platforms. Um, in that sense, like uh, if your question is like, uh, if someone is asking if uh, they should use one or the other, um, there is no clear answer to that, actually. Like, you you should use what you think is the best for you. You should use what you feel the most comfortable with. Um, if you're an Android developer coming uh, from a Kotlin environment and you know Kotlin and you really like it, then I would say that KMM in general is probably a better solution for you than Flutter um, because it's a whole different language, it's a different uh, environment, different ecosystem, and so on and so forth. Um, vice versa, if you're coming for, from a Flutter dev uh, standpoint, then uh, I think you can just stay in the same system and try building more solutions on different types of platforms. Um, the role, as, as you asked, of these platforms is just to try and unify the language, try to unify the platform because Nowadays, if you have dedicated Android teams, if you have dedicated iOS teams, um, if someone from the iOS team or Android team, let's say, goes away to a different company or they go on to a vacation or something like that, and they own a portion of the code base, you are one person down in that team and you can produce less work or like less uh, value, I guess. Um, but if you had one team that's pretty big, that can that is very versatile and uses the same platform, uses the same language environment, and so on, then if one person goes away to a different company or one person goes away on a vacation or something like that, then you have the entire team to fill in that spot and you can e more easily share share the load, I guess. So that's kind of the what the idea is now. With Kotlin multi-platform and the mobile part of it, there's like a lot of, I, I would say, things that are still not 100% clear. Because like a year or so ago, it was aimed to just share code between, or like the Kotlin native pro project was aimed to just share code between iOS and Android, the business logic, the data classes, and so on, so on. But then like a year later, it became a whole different thing where now you can build UI in it too. You have the desktop, desktop composting that's also uh, viable. So it's growing and it's shifting because it's a community driven project like uh, anything that JetBrains does. So in that sense, I can't really tell you what's going to happen in a year or when it goes like fully stable and full, fully ready. Um, we might not just see, you know, it being uh, ready for multi-platform or, or sorry, mobile, or it being just for a few platforms. We might even get like some extra things, like you know, maybe game development in it or something like that. I'm just like uh, ran trying random thoughts, but it can be pretty much anything that they want to build and they they are able to build with the system. So hopefully that kind of answers the question. Yeah, yeah, and and also again, uh, we will have a confusion around like. Should they go for game or should they go for Flutter? So even that has uh, they they don't understand the terminologies, but as the, uh, these are these terms are on hype, so they are just confused around it. So if you can help out, out them, like what what do they follow uh, the game or game or Flutter uh, if they start or yeah. So in in that sense, like it, it for me, it's really hard to say. Again, uh, I think like with Flutter you might not necessarily go into like the whole, um, I guess, multi-platform aspect of it. You might build mobile applications mostly, where and uh, even though you have the support for everything else, but it might limit like in the job search or like the business perspective, it might limit your abilities because if you're a Flutter dev and you're trying to build multiple things, it's very unlikely, I guess, it's very unlikely that you're going to build web applications with Flutter for your work. Uh, I mean, it's totally feasible you can do that, you can also do desktop applications, but most people will probably like have you use or build um, the mobile apps. Whereas on the Kotlin multi-platform uh, side, if you're going to, for the whole thing, then I think the, the context of it is that it, it is aimed for multiple platforms. So I think it might be easier to, uh, let's say, persuade the, the, the company, or it might be easier to find a job that actually requires of you not to build just the mobile apps, but something else. 
Uh, but again, it's like uh, Flutter is much more stable. It's it's been out for for a long time, and there's been many applications built with it. Um, whereas the Kotlin multi-platform part or the native part and all that, it's not as stable. It's still you know being uh, developed and all that. So that itself is going to hurt you in terms of business opportunities. So if you are looking to like try and build a multiple uh, or multi-platform apps, then I think Flutter would be the easier choice. But again, bear in mind that you might just end up uh, being, let's say, a mobile developer instead of, you know, building both desktop apps and web apps and uh, pretty much anything that Flutter allows you. Yeah, yeah. I, I have been asked this question many times and now I'll be adding your answer to that. <laughs> Thank you.